Thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. Uh, today in our technical webinar series on August 14th, we will be presenting the CIO Leadership Academy framework. Uh, this is a partnership between NISERNET and the SUNY SAIL Institute. We have two wonderful speakers here, Christy and Carolyn to speak on this. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please know uh, in this webinar format, you are muted. Uh, if you'd like to speak, let us know in the chat and we'd be more than happy to unmute you so you can speak as well. Any questions, feel free to place them in the chat as well and we will relay those to Christy and Carolyn uh, during the presentation and afterwards so that they can answer those for you. Uh, the, the webinar link recording will come out uh, 24 to 48 hours after this webinar completes uh, via the registration system. System. So look for them at the email that you registered for, uh, with, I apologize. And also we'll send the slides and some more information about the upcoming CIO Leadership Academy. Uh, I believe will be happening in the February timeframe of 2020, correct? Yep, all right, perfect. So I'm gonna just do a little quick introduction. What is the technical webinar series? Uh, this is a series that the SUNY Center for Professional Development is currently putting on for the 2019-2020 uh, school year. Uh, what we're trying to do is give some understanding to our technical communities uh, within SUNY and outside of SUNY as well. I know we have some people viewing from different universities as well uh, to help you guys understand different technical concepts that may be coming up in the industry or things that you guys may be struggling with and using those strategies strategies to actually address current challenges. We're also looking to highlight different tools and solutions that you guys may be interested in and support a community practice. Uh, and we're also looking to identify any opportunities for in-depth training that people might be interested in taking advantage of uh, through different methods and sources, in-person, online, live, uh, self-paced, uh, that sort of stuff. All the topics that are in our technical webinar series are things that the SUNY community has actually expressed to us through different methods, whether in person, surveys, conversations, um, different emails that we've seen going out within our technical communities. So these are all things that people have expressed interest in. Excuse me. If you have a topic that you're interested in or something that you have done research on and you're interested in presenting, uh, we would love to have you within a week or so. Uh, we'll have a call for presentations going out to our different listservs and on Workplace. Um, but if you want to send me something before that, feel free to use my email address or my phone number at the bottom of the screen um, and you can contact me. We would love to have you. We're looking for SUNY people to present to SUNY people. Uh, so we do have some upcoming webinars. You can see the link here. Uh, the two big ones that we have coming up um, is on IoT or Internet of Things, plus CAPM and PMP certifications if you work in the project management sphere, sphere and you're interested in getting certified in either of those. We're going to be doing a, a discussion on those. I also have some more that will be out there. Uh, we have five upcoming ones. We have one on Tableau. So if you're doing business intelligence and data analysis, that's a very interesting one. It's going to be taught uh, spoken by Kristen Mueller, who works in our system administration office. She uses it quite extensively. That's going to be a great one. We have one coming up on our managing multiple projects class in the beginning of September that you can sign up for. That one we'll be talking about the class we'll be offering here in October. So again, if you're in the project management sphere and we have some more information security ones coming in October as well as some other things as well. So definitely, if you haven't looked at our series website recently, take a look at it. We're adding new things constantly, and we're always sourcing for more information uh, for free so that you guys can get it and apply it to your uh, working lives. So today's speakers, um, we have two wonderful speakers here. Uh, Carolyn Matiski, she's the Associate Director at the SUNY Sale Institute. If you're not familiar with the SUNY Sale Institute, I highly suggest you take a look at it. Um, it is a leadership institute uh, for our SUNY communities to help them become better leaders and move up. Uh, they offer many different projects and many different programs that are awesome that can help you develop your leadership skills no matter what level you are. Um, we also have Christy Romer. She is the Director of Education Services at NISERNET. If you haven't checked them out, definitely do that as well. Um, they are a nonprofit here in New York State that works with different groups and IT professionals. They have a lot of great information that may be of help to you on their website. And they also offer a lot of training opportunities as well in the IT sphere. So I am going to turn it over to them so that they can present their information. Thank you for joining us. 
Let me just go ahead and uh, share my screen real quick. Thank you, Chris. Yes, thank you so much, Chris, for the introduction. Um, we thought we'd start with something fun and to kind of make sure that you know where the chat window is located on your screen. So if you had a time machine, where would you want to go? So if you could just go ahead and throw that in the chat. The chat window will be a great place for you to um, ask if you want to unmute. Um, also a great place to ask any questions that you may have. Nice, Carolyn. <laughs> I'm here to kick us off. <laughs> So Carolyn says somewhere around 1980 before social media. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to uh, add to our time machine? Where would you want to go? Colonial times, nice. Yes, I think it would be very interesting to kind of go back and see even where IT got started. So where, where were we 20, 30 years ago with it and how, how much slower paced was it? Just seems like in the um, past 20 years, it is just a full out speed war to get to the latest technologies. All right, we'll go ahead and talk about our CIO Leadership Academy framework, preparing the next generation of IT professionals to lead in higher education. So what I'd like to start with is why. Um, basically, back in 2017, I would have been at NIDERNET for about three years. Our board of directors are CIOs from universities and campuses across New York State. And one of the general themes that I kept hearing over and over at our conferences, at our workshops, was the lack of a pipeline for um, IT professionals or IT leadership, to be more specific. Um, the campuses were having trouble hiring and retaining qualified IT staff. Um, so they're bringing in entry level folks, but they're leaving before they get to that leadership position. And when I hear there's a problem, I'm a fixer. So I started doing some research to figure out what type of training could be put together to help solve this, this problem. So I ran across SUNY Sal, thankfully, in the summer of 2017. And I contacted their director at the time, Jason Lang. And he and I had a phenomenal conversation. And we both were very passionate about putting this program together. And within a six month time frame, we were able to launch the very first CIO Leadership Academy with the help of Carolyn, thank goodness, she came on board at that, at that point in juncture. So basically our why was to solve the missing pipeline for IT leaders. That was why we got started. Some other reasons that we found were issues. There were very few opportunities for staff to work with mentors outside their own organizations. I attended the Educause conference and I sat through a phenomenal panel of four women who were CIOs who discussed the importance of the mentors in their lives. And men and women mentors that they had that helped push them to get to the leadership level that they were at. And I just took that away as being a critical piece to any type of program that we put together. So what's very unique, I think, about our program is that we um, match mentors up with their protégés. And what we have found is that it has became lifelong friendships um, between the mentors and the protégés within our program. 
some of the other things in our program, we try to get into um, talking about current technology, talking about financial stuff that CIOs might have to know. Um, a lot of the campuses lack a clear succession, succession plan. Um, so our program helps with that. And the other nice thing and why I steered towards SUNY SAL is that it's all about higher education. And as you all know, higher education is a different beast of any type of um, corporation. And they have been in higher education since the, since the beginning and they know the ins and outs of it. So having that knowledge base that they have for higher ed has really helped with the program. Some highlights, we have 58 graduates to date, so we've ran this program for three years. In 2017, we actually won the Association for Talent Development um, Best Award that basically highlighted our program and the efforts that we put into um, coming together and making it work. Um, we're working currently on a managerial level. So what we've recognized is, okay, we've got a program that is um, filling the pipeline, hopefully for CIO level. But when those folks move from, to CIO, who's filling that pipeline for that managerial or director level? So that's something Caroline will talk about a little bit later. Um, and what we found is we have had um, three different sets of mentors and our industry has such talent um, that these folks are top notch and they are perfect, perfect um, partners for up and coming uh, leaders within our community. The picture that you see here was from our second cohort, I think. So our 2018 uh, group of graduates and the mentors. So really, uh, really had a great time and have learned so much through each one. Thank Carolyn, this is, this is your turn. Okay, great. Thanks, Christy, for kicking it off. And uh, I want to start off by saying that um, my partnership, SUNY's sales partnership with NyzerNet has been fantastic. And uh, so it's been a great way for us to collaborate and offer uh, a leadership academy for your members um, and also serve SUNY at the same time. Um, so we know we have a lot of talented uh, professionals, especially in IT, uh, who've been able to go through a program like this. It's pretty unique, um, which is um, affordable for them and they don't really have to travel very far. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how it's structured, but um, just want to give kudos to my partner, Christy. It's a big reason why we're successful is because of that strong partnership. Uh, so we seek out mentors for our programs as a really crucial piece of this. And we've been very lucky that um, people who we ask to be mentors, people who are identified as uh, seasoned successful CIOs on campus. They have uh, volunteered their time and they have been there to support a group of protégés. Uh, so we don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship of mentor and protégé, but rather to be effective um, and more efficient with um, our, our pool of mentors that we, we seek out. We give them a group of protégés. So no more than five, um, but it is a group mentoring relationship. The program um, has helped participants in a number of ways. And uh, one of the key ways that we do that is to give them some assessments and give them uh, better data about what they're doing well uh, and how their leadership style impacts the work that they do and uh, the teams that they're trying to lead. Um, so we have uh, used our SUNY 360 tool uh, to give them some insight into how they see themselves and how others on their team, their, their manager, whoever they report to, any direct reports, and their colleagues across the campus um, to give them that important feedback that they need on how they're doing as a leader. Um, and uh, we also use a DISC work of leaders assessment too. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we give them some uh, data that they can use uh, to help improve their leadership approach. 
Uh, we work through a pretty robust curriculum. It's a semester-long experience, uh, and we cover a lot of a lot of ground in that semester. Uh, I'd say one of the highlights for most participants, and, or um, reasons that they find it so uh, beneficial, is that it is a semester-long, and it's not just a go to Albany for two days and go back to your campus and you're on your own. Uh, but this is really a support network that begins and we kick things off with a two day um, uh, event so that they can start to um, build those important relationships both with their mentor and also with the other uh, colleagues that they meet in the program. So this here is a timeline of what we have done for the past three years. So we kicked things off in 2017. Um, and then once we had our first group of 20 graduates, um, we did add a, a mid-semester retreat. So you'll see there in 2018 that we added um, a mid-semester. It was a networking and learning event. So took the opportunity to welcome back those graduates and give them an opportunity to serve as leaders and share their story of growth over the past year. Um, so that's uh, really been nice to be able to offer that going forward. Uh, we did that uh, this past year, and we actually had one of our past graduates uh, who flew back from Florida. Uh, she has been uh, promoted to a CIO uh, at a really uh, wonderful uh, institution in Florida, and she came back and delivered our keynote address in, um, in March. So uh, we keep them busy. We've got an opening retreat. We do the mid-semester retreat now, and then we do a graduation in May. So that is the full experience. Um, and you'll see in there that we offer growth sessions. Uh, so those are online uh, three-hour curriculums. So it just makes it a better, um, easier experience for people to not have to travel for every single event. Um, but we're able to offer quite a bit throughout that semester. Thank you. Okay. So we talked about the blending lear blended learning. Uh, so we do a mix of in person and online. Uh, it is really important to form those relationships at the kickoff. So uh, we always have a two day kickoff event. Uh, and this is a great opportunity for the mentors to start to communicate with the protégés and understand their goals and where they are. So at that uh, kickoff, we share with the mentors the 360 results if the protégé is okay with sharing them they they typically are uh, and give the the proteges an opportunity to really document and write down their goals for the semester so we call that a pre-program assessment uh, and we uh, outline all of the uh, learning objectives of the program uh, and we ask them to rate themselves on a scale of one to five uh, in each of those areas so they'll be um, working in a diverse um, diverse work environment, uh, public speaking, um, uh, building a team, and all of those different learning objective areas, the areas we cover throughout the program, they're starting with uh, how they see themselves, and then they also have a space to add any particular goals in each of those areas that they want to work toward. So it's really a great starting place. Um, and then the, the growth sessions are three hours long. Uh, it sounds like a really long experience, uh, but they go by in a flash. We use Zoom for those, and Zoom has breakout rooms. So our uh, speakers who come, they will only have uh, about 25 minutes to uh, cover their, their topic area. So we want a very short lecture, and then we give the participants a chance to work in their mentoring circle and talk about um, the ideas that are presented in the lecture. And uh, it's, it's uh, worked out really well to keep those moving and the agenda is full, but it's a blend of lecture and uh, uh, hands-on experience and, and discussion. So why does it work? Um, we have a few reasons, and so the next few slides are going to talk about why we think this framework for leadership development for IT is successful. And one of them is, you know, this audience is very comfortable with technology, so being in that virtual environment makes those growth sessions happen really easily. Um, there's not a lot of training that Chrissy or I have to do to get people prepared to learn in an online environment, um, and so that just makes things flow really easily. And technology right now, you know, Zoom technology is so easy. It's intuitive for people and this audience in particular. It's very easy. 
So we talked about our in-person kickoff and there, here are some pictures from one of those kickoff events. Uh, and you see uh, our beautiful meeting space here in Albany. We host these at the Rockefeller Institute for Government, which is across from Washington Park. It's a beautiful retreat center. Um, it's not in a very congested area. It's a nice chance for people to get away and uh, start to um, make some connections as a cohort. Uh, and you'll also see in the other picture there, we've got participants who are sort of touching and they're close close to each other. And uh, that's one of our interactive activities that we do to start to get people to understand culture. Um, I won't give the whole exercise away, um, but we do have a lot of fun at these events. And uh, so the two days are, are chock full of um, uh, lecture and interactive activities. So we did talk a little bit already about our virtual growth sessions. And this is a screenshot from one of those where we had Dr. Scott Vinciguerra leading the group uh, on a leadership topic. And we do have a lot of dialogue. So it's not just one speaker, um, you know, hogging the, the airspace for three hours, but there's a lot of dialogue and our participants come with questions. Uh, we do sometimes give them a little bit of pre-work. So an article to read to sort of prime them for the, the growth session um, and lots of opportunity to uh, ask the uh, presenter questions and also to connect with their really um, uh, good mentor. And we make sure that every single one of our sessions, the mentors have time to um, do Q&A with the folks that are protégés um, as a group and then individually. And I think that really makes a big difference that we're giving them essentially one-on-one -on -one time with CIOs that are seasoned veterans that have been through issues that they may be dealing with that can provide advice. So um, that's been one of the big, big feedback pieces that we've received on our program and agendas. There we are. So Christy and I have both been in uh, learning and development for a number of years. So we've got this background that um, makes it very easy for us to work together. We speak the same language and uh, we're both here to, to serve our organizations well. And so having two of us um, to moderate these events and to run the program has made it um, much easier than any one of us uh, doing it on our own. Uh, Christy, did you wanna talk about this slide? Sure, sure. So one of the things that um, actually we were in the, the beginnings of the first cohort in 2017 and the mentors came back and said, you know what this program needs? It needs an applied learning project. We need a goal for them to be able to um, have for the end of the semester where they be able to show us how they take what they're learning and they're applying it back at their job. So one of the things that we um, built into the program is the applied learning project. And basically it can be any project that you have on campus that's ongoing or that you wanna take on. Um, where you have to work with team of people and kind of manage them or oversee that project. Um, so that has kind of grown and evolved as we've gone through the different, different um, cohorts. Um, but the biggest thing that we find that folks get from doing the applied learning project is changing their way of communicating. So that's the, the, big piece that this program helps you to understand that communication is the key to um, having an effective team um, and basically being a leader. Um, so the, we do the on the capstone, the very last um, session of the program, the folks get to do a presentation on their applied learning project um, and it has been very, very eye-opening to um, see the different projects on campus, but also how the folks that have gone through our program have changed the way that they lead. Um, Carolyn, do you have anything else to add? No, just that um, the Applied Learning Project adds a nice touchstone for people to keep checking in and um, 
taking what they're learning in the classroom or virtual learning space and apply it immediately. So a lot of times, you know, you'll sit through a lecture and say, well, that's good to know, but how does that really work for me? And this is something that they're working on throughout the semester and beyond. They don't have an expectation. We don't have an expectation that it's fully implemented um, by the time they graduate, but we give them a reasonable amount of time. They, we ask them to pick something that uh, they're, they're working on uh, or plan to work on and can fully execute within a year. So uh, they've got uh, something tangible and they can take those lessons that they're learning with us and apply them right away. And we've already talked extensively about the mentors, um, but what's really what's really awesome to share is that through the mid-semester networking where we invite back the cohorts from um, past programs, when they come in, they talk about how they just had coffee the previous week with one of the mentor, with their mentor. So we're talking, you know, years later, relationships that are still there that they met. Um, that they were able to develop because of being part of this program. Um, so that's something that Carol and I are, are really, really proud about. Yeah, on that note too, I'll just add that uh, any signature program that SAIL offers, uh, we consider the graduates of those programs our alumni, our SUNY leadership alumni. And so with that, um, we uh, are trying to create a community uh, within SUNY um, and beyond of people who are still committed to their learning and their leadership development. So we do offer uh, continued opportunities to take advantage of programs that we offer as part of that alumni network. One of the things that we realized as well was for the um, growth sessions, so the online pieces of this program, we wanted to make sure that we didn't call it webinar because um, we wanted to set the stage that it was going to be a collaborative training event um, and renaming that as a virtual growth session, we feel made a big difference in what the expectation was of coming into that into that virtual environment. Um, so it's truly a collaborative back and forth, the mentors, the protégés, they all chime in with the presenters. Um, so it's not just that talking head um, type of an atmosphere. And we think that makes the biggest difference with the virtual growth sessions, um, especially seeing that they're about three, three and a half hours long. Um, some people would think that would be grueling, but it goes by in the blink of an eye. Yeah, and we take surveys, quick surveys after each of these sessions to uh, keep us uh, abreast of changes that we need to make so we can adjust along the way and from year to year. And the feedback about these growth sessions has been consistently positive that people find this three hour format um, to be the right amount of time. So this is the exciting part where we get to talk about our, our hopes and dreams for next year. So these are our plans in the works. Um, we have not uh, publicized this yet. So you're uh, among uh, an elite group that uh, can hear about what we're, we're planning for 2020. Um, but we've talked about three cohorts of CIO uh, level uh, professionals going through the program. So we feel that uh, we've really met a significant portion of the need at that level in the pipeline. And so we want to focus our attention on um, those openings that are happening at campus because people are being advanced to CIO level. So we're going to take a look at um, offering something for the managerial level. And so we're excited about this. Yeah, we're doing a very similar approach to what we offer for the CIOs, um, but it will be at a lower price point um, and not quite as intense. Uh, so there are a few distinctions and we're happy to talk about some of those differences. Uh, we're calling it roughly right now, uh, our draft name is the Leadership Boot Camp. So leading for IT professionals on campus. We'll start with a two day opening retreat and we'll have a very similar focus to what we do um, uh, for the CIO group and we will have the mentors included. So our graduates, our 58 graduates that we have, we're gonna be asking them uh, to give back and to serve as mentors in this new uh, managerial leadership program. Uh, we will still offer our virtual growth sessions. 
um, and we will um, you know, focus on the various topics you can see here, uh, which are very similar to what we offer to the CIO group. Um, the one uh, big difference I'd say uh, between the CIO Leadership Academy and what we're planning for our managers is uh, that the applied learning experience will be a little bit different. We're not um, going to require this group to go through a full uh, project, um, but rather, um, we're planning a public speaking, um, a few assignments around public speaking. So uh, we know the importance, Christy talked about the importance of communication and leadership and the link that people make uh, and your ability to be able to present information and communicate in various uh, formats. So we wanna focus on that for our managerial level. And so we're planning some um, practice and some opportunities for people to start to do uh, some public speaking. So that um, is probably the biggest difference. Um, and some of our uh, data assessments that we talked about are gonna be a little bit different. So um, we'll have a, we will still have assessments for these folks, but it will be a little bit different and um, more applicable for managers. So we wanna know about you. Uh, so feel free to type in the chat. Um, we wanna know what are those leadership challenges that you're facing on your campus and the big issues that you think sales should be focused on um, and the things that you're dealing with. Christy, what's going on at NISERNET? Any leadership challenges your organization is grappling with? Uh, we are starting to work on succession planning. Um, we have many seasoned employees um, who will be retiring in the next two to five years. So um, us who are younger at the organization um, are really pushing our executive team to start thinking about this so that we can make sure there is a, a still a nicer net <laughs> to uh, to work at in the next uh, in the next uh, 10 to 15 years before we start our succession planning <laughs> good. good and I see someone else is uh, mentioning succession planning um, and we also have rapid technology changes yeah and it actually kind of um, brings me uh, to the fact that uh, the first year we started this CIO Leadership Academy, we weren't quite sure the balance we wanted to offer with technology and focusing on the um, more tangible technology issues that IT professionals face. Uh, so Christy, I don't, do you wanna talk a little bit about sort of the evolution that we've had in offering technology um, as part of this? Um. Well, we certainly don't do, you know, hands-on technology training in our programs. We do touch upon, um, we try to bring in a, a speaker that will talk about some trends that are they're seeing when it comes to technology. Um, it really depends on the school we're finding as far as how much technology knowledge a leader needs to have. Um, obviously, the bigger schools, uh, the, the leaders can um, source that down to the, the folks underneath them to make sure that they're, they're up to speed um, with technology. But some of the smaller schools, they might only have two, three people in the department. So there's no way that their leadership um, can take a, a back seat to um, knowing the technology. Our focus is really on building that leadership and helping you to, to um, build your team and work with your team, whether it was existing already before you got into that position or you have to start from scratch. Um, so we touch about, upon different technologies that um, you may be facing, but we certainly don't do any deep dives into it. Yeah, we weren't quite sure the first year out and then uh, after the first year we 
focus, we realized the focus people were coming to us for leadership assistance. So we really um, were, uh, we made a few tweaks in 2018 to respond to that. And uh, now we know people want to think about leadership challenges and communication and building a team and all of those, um, all of those leadership related issues. Um, one other thing that I didn't mention in the presentation that I just wanted to add um, is that the nice thing about uh, taking advantage of one of the programs offered by sale is that we accept CPD and ITEC points. Uh, so it makes it easier for people to take advantage of if there are, you know, not dollars actually exchanging hands um, for this program. So if your campus is a member of the CPD, um, then we uh, can accept CPD points as a method of payment. Um, and because this program is focused on IT, uh, we can also accept ITEC points. So that makes it easier for people to take advantage of. Um, and just to give you an idea of what the, the price was for CIO Leadership Academy, it was um, $1,750 for the full uh, semester experience. That includes everything. Um, the only thing it does not include is if uh, you do have to travel to Albany for um, the kickoff and the graduation. Uh, the mid-semester, we actually rotate. We didn't talk about this, but we rotate back to one of our participating campuses and give them an opportunity to sort of welcome people into their campus and tour around um, and see the good work that's happening there. But uh, that travel to those uh, in-person events is not included, but $17.50 for the CIO, and we are uh, still working on this leadership boot camp, um, and it will be, uh, it will be less money than, than that. Um, and also, we're, I'm hearing that there uh, is going to be a scholarship in the works um, from the, the CIO group. So they have seen what we're offering, and a lot of them have been very supportive, and uh, so there's going to be more financial incentive too for people uh, to take advantage of these programs. So look for more information on that. So that's really all we prepared. We wanted to make sure you knew about the framework that we have. Um, one more thing that I'll add is just that um, this CIO Leadership Academy framework has been su so successful that we now have other um, areas of interest that have approached sale to ask us to replicate this model for their group. So you'll see our Chief Business Officers Leadership Academy kicking off later this month, and that's really built on this framework. So um, kudos to Christy for uh, approaching sale uh, was it four years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so it really uh, gave birth to this framework that we've found um, to be really successful for us. And uh, we hope that we'll see you in the classroom at one of our programs. Thank you so very much, Christy and Carolyn. We appreciate your time today and going over this with our participants in the technical webinar series. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, the recording will go out within 24 to 48 hours. In the email will also be in a, a link to SUNY Sale and NISERNET so you can check them out and the CIO Leadership uh, Academy page so that you can check that out for more information as well. Uh, does anybody have any last minute questions before we let these lovely ladies go? Okay. Well, we will give you back about 20 minutes of your time. Thank you for spending the time with us. We really appreciate it. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Carolyn. Bye. Thank you.